Over the persistent hum of the TBM, the tunnel operations manager and the TBM operator alternately check the pressure on the instrument panel and monitor the muck coming off the screw conveyor. It's been a rough few days for crews building the five mile long water supply tunnel under the San Francisco Bay. The Hitachi Zosin EPBM has hit its first patch of bad ground, some 2,500 feet into its drive. Most of what we had to begin with was a very stiff, tight, impervious clay. Jim Stevens is project manager for the contractor, Michaels J.D. Coluccio Joint Venture. We've hit some uh, gravels with sand that were loaded with water, and that is really difficult to handle when it comes, comes at you right behind a clay plug and you don't know it's there. Down in the working shaft, the continuous conveyor is running, but when the slop blows out under pressure at the tunnel face, it spills over the advancing tailpiece into the invert and must be suctioned up into muck buckets on the locomotive. The 58-foot diameter shaft can only accommodate so much, and with just two muck buckets, progress drops to 40 feet per day from a high of 155 feet the week before. And there's more troubling news from the surface on the east side of the bay where work is just beginning on the reception shaft. The big challenge today is a burrowing owl that may stop the whole job unless we can get it worked around. The tunnel is part of the $4.2 billion water system improvement program for the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. Just south of the Dumbarton Bridge, the 15-foot diameter tunnel will reach depths of 110 feet as it progresses from a working shaft at Menlo Park on the peninsula to another in Newark on the east side of the bay. Joanna Huang is project manager for the client. This project is we're definitely in the middle of a very environmentally sensitive area and uh, our construction schedule could be affected by how well we mitigate the risk around us. Also on the east side, the discovery of contaminated water has required a design change for the slurry wall reception shaft. To a frozen shaft to just block all of the water, it'll be easier to handle. We won't have this mess that slurry walls and jet grouting, you know, do on a job. Because it's too, too confined area with wetlands right next to it within 10 feet away. And, Pretty, pretty difficult site. Despite the challenges, excavation is about two months ahead of schedule. About 70 percent of the precast lining segments are on site, with more arriving every day from the trailer-shaped plant in Stockton, about two hours away. We're on budget, we're on schedule. I think since we launched the machine last year in mid-August, they've mined over 2,500 feet and installed over 500 rings. They had to do three reconfiguration stops to progressively install the 600 plus feet of trailing gear behind the machine. And uh, they already successfully maneuvered through the first of the four curves on the tunnel alignment. And it's now on the straight section and hopefully is going to be moving faster. We're about 50 days ahead of schedule. We've got an unbelievably good crew. I mean, they are exceptional. The local workforce here is, is turning out to be very, very good. Stevens is especially pleased to see young engineers entering the tunneling industry, including his tunnel operations manager, Kit Fleming. The 32-year-old has an engineering master's degree from Stanford University and was recently promoted to deputy project manager. There, you know, there's people out there with 20 years of experience. It's one year 20 times. There's other people that have five years experience that they've been able to capitalize on what they learned and apply it and apply it and apply it makes a huge difference and he's one of those kind of people. Checking in with the project four weeks later, the TBM is still hitting pockets of sand and water. However, the environmental issues at the reception shaft are resolved and progress rates are back up. As of February 27, 2012, the TBM is more than 4,700 feet or 18 percent into its drive with about 21,700 feet to go. In Northern California, Paula Wallace for TunnelTalk.com.